Chapter 33. Guan Chul's mobile phone had the song, My Destiny. Guan Chul was determined to start a friendship with Riel, and get closer to her. He tried to make her remember that they had been lovers for five years. When they arrived at the Han mansion, Guan Chul directed them to the receiving area while waiting for dinner. Guan Chul brought out from his pocket his mobile phone and handed it to Riel. She got astonished by the wallpaper, and her eyes looked like they were in love. What is this for? asked Riel. Oh? Uh, I want to show some pictures we had for the last five years. Hyun Ki interrupted. Is that necessary, Huan? Riel wouldn't remember any of those you wanted her to see. It's all right, Hyun. It could be interesting. However, I'll look into it tonight. Huan, thank you, Riel assured Huan Chul. Thank you for giving me a chance, Riel. Who knows, it might help you remember things about us. Huan Chul in a hopeful tone. Riel smiled then kept the mobile phone in her bag. Hyun Aki's eyes were on Huan Chul with a rugged look. Huan Chul caught Hyun's gaze at him and spoke. I am trying to help, who knows, that might boost Reeler's memory to recall her past, bro. Huan Chul gave an affiliative smile. After dinner, Hyun Ki invited Huan Chul for a light drink of wine for small talk while Riel moved to the lounge area. She took Huan Chul's mobile and browsed on it. She saw her photo with Huan Chul wherein he was holding her back to catch her from tumbling, and around them were students who were moving as if forming a line formation. Her eyes were glued to this particular picture, but with no reaction on her face. She gazed at it for a few minutes, then tapped her finger to another slide. The next photo was her, seriously holding a book as she leans her back by the old tree's trunk. She was fascinated at how the shot was taken and smiled. She thought the print was photographed reasonably well and she never imagined she was that cute to look at to have her picture taken. She was about to push another slide when Hyun Ki hugged her and whispered they were leaving. Riel smiled and touched Hyun Ki's face lovingly. She rose from her seat, put the mobile back in her bag, and clasped Hyun's hand. Huan Chul was watching them closely and was envious of how Riel took Hyun Ki's hand and held it to hers. When inside the car, Hyun Ki held Riel close and wrapped her around him in silence. Juni, the chauffeur, was looking at the rearview mirror, wondering why both were so quiet, then put back his focus on his driving. Riel and Hyun Aki remained quiet while being close in each other's arms, their togetherness spoke louder than words could express. When Juni declared they were near Reeler's house, Hyun Ki held Reeler's chin, caressed her face, and kissed her forehead. I'll see you tomorrow, sweetheart. Have me in your dreams tonight, babe, whispered Hyun Ki. See you in my dreams, love. Then she kissed his cheek gently, but Hyun Aki caught her lips, kissed her tenderly, whispered, Sirang Riel was lying on her bed with Huan Chao's mobile phone in her hand. She continued her browsing where she paused a while ago and was stunned by the next slide. It was a short video of her and Huan Chul. Riel saw herself listening to music on her mobile when Huan took a part of her earphone to his ear, then waved his hand smiling while she was surprised by Huan Chao's action. Riel tapped the short video, looking at it repeatedly many times. Clicking it then she suddenly recalled the scene. She saw in her vision how Huan Chul came to her that day. She was quietly sitting under the old tree, reading a novel while listening to music, when Huan Chul suddenly appeared out of nowhere, sat by her side, and took a piece of her earphone to find out what music she was listening to. She recalled hitting him with the book she was reading for interfering with her peace. Then Huan Chul quickly brought out a bunch of baby's breath flowers growing around the old tree. And she remembered the words spoken by Huan Chul. I want to be a friend to you, Mari. Could we be friends? pleaded Huan Chul. Riel was in tears after recalling the entire story of that short video. That was the start on how they became close. Huan always met her by the old tree, and once made her listen to Korean songs he had in his playlist. She thought of looking more at Huan's mobile phone until she saw the title, Korean Songs. She clicked on it, then came to the song, my destiny this was the song Huan Chul always played to her whenever they wanted to listen to music on their mobile phones. Reeler's tears turned into weeping while the song was playing. She sat on her bed, put her knees together, placed her arms on top of her knees, laid her head on them, then sobbed, making her throat and chest hurt, sniffling on her tissues. Reeler sobbing awakened Donna and Zia, both came to her, and when they noticed the music playing, they were alarmed. Riel, why are you crying? Does the song make you cry? Where did you get this? Asked Donna, her voice shaky. I got it from a friend, Riel said and quickly added, Please don't be bothered. I only got emotional by that song, nothing more. Emotional? Your cries were alarming, 
dear sister. We thought you were having a bad dream, exclaimed Zia. This song made you too emotional? But why? She asked. Oh, nothing. Please, stop asking questions. Can't I be emotional at times? Could you leave me in peace? Please, Riel said in annoyance, then begged to leave her be. The song My Destiny pierced into Rieler's heart, recalling her time with Huan Shul. Yes, she now remembered Huan Shul as someone close to her heart but couldn't recall how far their friendship went, but that song kept on piercing her heart, to the point of feeling a heartbreak. But why? She asked, confused. Donna rose and shrugged her shoulders. Okay, go on with your sentiments, but please, keep your cries low, weep all you can. Good night Donna was irritated by real earth's reasoning. Zia squinted at Riel, then said, cry alone. I care less. Go on, cry baby, cry, Zia teased. Riel kept listening to the song concomitantly, with her weeping until she fell asleep. The following morning, Riel felt her head and her eyelids heavy. She looked in the mirror and with eyes wide, suddenly partially covered her face. She couldn't grope for the right words to describe her looks. Oh, my God. What happened to my face? How could I go to work with these eyes? She said in a quiet, trembling voice. She was worried and shaky, talking to herself. How will you explain this to your love? Huh, Riel that you cried all night? For whom? And why? She asked herself when her mobile phone rang. Sweetheart, are you ready? We are on our way to get you. Hyun Ki asked. Riel was in a nervous wreck. She didn't know what to say, and she had not gone to shower yet. Then she said, I am not feeling well, love. Could I come in late, please? What happened to you? You were in good shape last night. I'm coming to see you right now. You might need a doctor. I could bring you there. Hyun Ki was worried. No, I, no, you don't have to come. My mom could take care of me. It's, it is not that serious, Riel was stammering. Just let me come to the office later, please? She begged Hyun Ki. He set aside a minute, then said, okay. But if this later you said didn't happen, I'll come and see you. Don't make me worry. Okay, babe. He stressed. Yes, love. I'll come in later. Don't worry about me. Okay, she said. Riel was in a panic. She didn't know how to resolve her swollen eyes. While she was in the mirror checking her face, Donna was shocked. What happened to your face, my dear sister? How long had you been crying that made your eyes swell? Asked Donna, about to laugh. If you'll just tease me. You're not helping, Riel frowned. Okay, okay. Now let me see. I think we have a cucumber inside the vegetable compartment of the fridge. Slice two pieces and place them on your eyes. Let it stay for a few minutes, and check from time to time. And next time, don't cry too hard. Okay, Donna chuckled. Three hours passed, and Riel was getting ready to dress up when the doorbell rang. It was Junie, asking for Riel. Mrs. Kama asked him to wait and she'll check if Riel was ready. Riel was applying her makeup, highlighting her eyelids to make it sophisticated to conceal the traces of swollen eyes. When Mrs. Kama entered her room, your driver is here, Riel. Don't keep him waiting, Mrs. Kama said. I'm very much ready, my dearest mom, Riel sing song, being in a happy mood. Riel came out of the door and walked into the car. She was surprised. Hyun Ki was waiting for her. Is my babe all right now? He asked smiling while Riel sat beside him. Riel smiled, kissed him on his cheek, then said, you can't wait, huh she teased. I can't focus on my work without you by my side, sweetheart. I felt uneasy thinking about your being unwell, Hyun Ki caressed her hair with a caring look. I am here now, love. I feel well already, she spoke, gazing at him lovingly. Let us have our lunch before returning to the office, Hyun Ki suggested. As soon as they stepped out of the elevator, Guan Chul stood in front of them. I was about to leave to see you, when I learned from your secretaries that you were indisposed, feeling unwell. I got worried, Guan Chul explained. Thank you for your concern, Juan. I am all right now, Riel smiled sweetly at him, and Juan felt something odd about Riel. Could I invite you today for a coffee break? One more chance, he opined. Riel responded with a gentle smile, yes, of course. Is it okay with you? Hyunshi turned to Hyunaki for his permission. Hyunaki responded with a fake smile. Sure, you already said yes. What more can I say? He said in a defeated tone. He strode past Huan Chul, pulling Reeler's wrist. 
Riel looked back at Huan Chul and smiled as she walked along with Hai Yunqi. Huan Chul was overjoyed by the way Riel reacted. He went back to his office, sauntering, whistling a happy tune. It was like he saw a ray of hope, the feeling he had previously felt when he asked Mari to be her friend during their first encounter by the old tree in high school. His heart was filled with gladness and thrill. He smiled and hoped for a start of a good friendship. Riel seemed to have pieces of her memory resurfacing. She became soft in her conduct towards Huan Chul. Will Riel regain her memory for good?